Hello everyone, I'm Marcus and I'll be your guide today. Together, we'll walk through some common scenarios of using the Manufacturing Data Engine and Looker from Google Cloud. Using its market-leading AI and data products, Google Cloud created an end-to-end -end solution for processing, contextualizing, and storing factory data. The solution leverages key Google Cloud products, including Cloud Dataflow, Looker, BigQuery, and PubSub. For today's demo, we've set up a simulated factory that generates synthetic data and exposes it over OPC UA interfaces. We've also deployed an instance of Google's manufacturing data engine and connected it to the simulated factory. MTE ingests, harmonizes, structures, and contextualizes the data from the factory. We have also set up an instance of Looker to visualize the data and enable data exploration. Using this foundational setup, I will demo two visualization scenarios. One, real-time factory visibility with a UI UX optimized dashboards that allow um, the simulated factory data to be visualized as well as key KPIs and insights to the relevant user personas. And second, integrated analytics that showcases how easy it is to detect events in Looker. The demo scenario is based on a hypothetical company named Motion PCB Limited. This company is a leading manufacturer of rugged, high reliability printed circuit boards. You can see one of them at the top left. Motion PCBs customers are mostly automotive suppliers who integrate their, therefore, quality, longevity, and overall ruggedness of the PCBs are key selling points for a company. Motion PCB decided to embark on a connected factory journey to improve its efficiency, increase quality, and consistency. The company has three goals in the first phase. One, it wants to ingest live factory data. Two, surface this data in views and dashboards optimized for various user personas. And three, analyze events and trends in that data. Motion PCB starts the smart factory implementation with one of their main assembly lines. This assembly line has three machines. One, the stencil printer starts with an, an empty circuit with an empty circuit uh, board. It deposits solder paste with high precision to prepare electric joints for when the electric components are added later. Two, the placement machine then adds those components, such as ICs, commonly referred to as chips. The machine places these directly onto the solder points where the stencil printer already deposited the solder paste before. At this stage, the solder paste is still liquid and the components are not yet fixed. In the last step, the reflow oven exposes the circuit board to a controlled profile of heat, which solidifies the solder paste and creates a permanent electric joint. At the end of the assembly line, Motion PCB has installed a visual inspection, inspection quality control station this station leverages Google's Coral TPU modules to accelerate ML inferencing. This station was installed only a few months ago. In this demo, we have two personas with different objectives. Carlos is Motion PCB's factory manager. He is looking for a clear understanding of the factory status and seeing key information at a glance. Carlos started the Connected Factory Initiative and led the installation of the visual inspection station. After discovering that quality fluctuates, he now doubled down on connecting the rest of the factory to see where those quality fluctuations are coming from. Fatima is the maintenance engineer responsible for keeping the assembly line running. She needs a more detailed view of each machine and wants to find the root cause of problems to identify the right fix. To help Carlos and Fatima do their job, Motion PCB implemented a dashboard for each of them to show just the right information. Let's start with Carlos, the factory manager. What you see here is the factory manager dashboard that gives Carlos a high level overview of his assembly line. In the upper part, you'll see key manufacturing KPIs, such as overall equipment effectiveness, availability, yield, quality, and performance. The top right corner surfaces alerts to make sure that Carlos's attention is pointed to developing events early on. In the lower part of the dashboard, you'll see a visual representation of the factory line, along with machine level KPIs. At the very bottom, we surface quality and performance as time series data. 
This helps Carlos examine trends very easily. Currently, the factory is operating normally, producing PCBs at its expected rate with average quality. Besides the factory manager Carlos, there's Fatima, the maintenance engineer. Fatima needs to have a more detailed view of the factory to understand not only if there are problems, but also where exactly they are coming from and what root causes are driving them. To this end, Fatima set up her own dashboards without needing to write code. As our solution leverages Looker, Fatima was able to configure the dashboard simply using drag and drop. Fatima set up four dashboards for herself, the one here, which gives her an overview of the assembly line, and three detailed machine level views. For example, this tile over here shows detailed quality scores assigned to each PCB produced. This data is coming directly from the visual inspection module set up at the end of the assembly line, and the system can detect the work quality of each of the three process steps. Next, let's navigate to the machine views and start with the stencil printer. Fatima set up this page to give her key information about the stencil printer. At the top, she has the stencil printer's key KPIs. In the middle section, Fatima picked a time series view for the printer's three sensors, temperature, humidity, and paste flow rate. In our example, these are the three most relevant process parameters that determine the quality of this process step. Finally, in the equipment log, you'll see key log entries coming from this stencil printer. The machine's messages are arriving in an industry standard format with a number of different types of messages. Info messages include, for example, order execution, for which the machine simply reports starting and finishing work on a PCB unit. In the log here, you see these arriving in real time. Now, let's see what happens if this stencil printer experiences a failure. To do this, I will open the simulator UI, switch on the first event, and collapse it back. Let's also set the view to show the last 10 minutes only, to zoom in on the most recent developments. Once done, the dashboard refreshes and then shows the data. Okay, now we notice a couple of things. First, the flow rate is deteriorating. That's interesting. Let's see if the machine reports any relevant status messages by looking into the event log below. Here, we notice that the low-level process control system in the machine detected that the flow rate is abnormally low. Good to know. Notice that Fatima doesn't have a time series dashboard set up for quality versus flow rate. However, she'd like to understand if the lower flow rate is a cause for concern in terms of quality. This is where Looker comes in. It allows Fatima to ask follow-up questions and answer them herself very easily without having to involve a data analyst, a programmer, or anyone else for that matter. To explore the relationship between quality and flow rate, Fatima simply clicks Explore from here from the flow rate tile. This brings up Looker's integrated explore view that allows her to investigate any data. What you see here is a chart with the average flow rate over time and a table with the data below. Let's add quality to it. In the sidebar, I simply search for quality and click to add it to the chart. Last, I click run to ask Looker to pull the data from BigQuery. As a result, I see both flow rate and quality in the same chart. And really, there seems to be a strong correlation. Quality has been stable, but deteriorated quickly after the flow rate went down. This puts Fatima on the right track in her maintenance investigation. Fatima investigates the stencil printer logs and determines that the stencil printing head needs a replacement. She replaces the printing head and will reflect that by switching off the simulated event. Returning to the office, Fatima checks to verify that the quality scores are returning to normal. However, as in any factory, there is always something going on in Motion PCB's assembly line. Let's see what happens when we switch on the second event. Okay, so now we see an alert in the dashboard. Something is wrong with the placement machine, so let's dig in. I'll first open the placement machine dashboard. Here, we have an overview of key sensor time series for the placement machine. One sensor measures the acceleration of the placement mechanics as it moves across the circuit boards to place the chips. The other sensor, on the right, measures background vibration, as the machine is highly sensitive to any excess background vibration. 
we see that the background vibration has been pretty high for the last few minutes. Acceleration also looks a bit unusual, exceeding normal levels. The log also shows several event messages produced by the machine, which state that it has trouble stabilizing the placement mechanics. Fatima heads out to the factory floor. Arriving at the placement machine, she opens the maintenance view for this alert, but this particular error hasn't been detected before and the root cause is unclear. After some digging, she notices that the power unit of the machine is excessively loud and creates a strong background hum. Luckily, she knows how to repair the power unit and does it on the spot. To reflect that, let's switch off the simulated event. After a few moments, we observe the vibration values returning to normal. Fatima has done a great job repairing the equipment. Now, back to Carlos in the office. Carlos is wondering if he can do something about the OEE numbers, which have some room for improvement. Looking at the quality scores for each machine, it becomes pretty clear that the quality produced by the reflow oven is quite low. This looks like a promising opportunity to dig deeper. Carlos asks Fatima to investigate. Let's look at the reflow oven dashboard to see if we can find anything that could explain the problem. The machine reports no errors, the log looks clean. So nothing obvious here. Let's look at the sensor values if we can see something. In PCB manufacturing, the reflow oven needs to expose each circuit board to a specific temperature curve to harden the solder paste. The only thing that stands out here is that the peak temperatures seem to vary slightly in their heights. Mousing over the chart, it's clear. Some peaks are at 230 degrees Celsius, some at 250 degrees Celsius. But does this affect quality? And if yes, which of the temperatures produce better quality? Let's go into explore mode to investigate. First, I will customize the chart to focus on the most relevant information. To this end, I'll remove the humidity data series from the chart, and I will also set the time filter to the last 20 minutes. Next, I will add the average quality data series to the report and click on run to fetch the data. Looking at this, it's pretty obvious. Higher peak temperatures result in better quality. Seems like the reflow oven is not able to consistently create the right temperature pattern. Fatima decides to involve the machine OEM in this. Looker makes it easy to share this view right from the screen. By clicking on the menu button, then on send, I can share the report in various data formats and over various channels. For example, email. Let's send this to the supplier and add a note. This helps shorten time to repair, sometimes dramatically, by using data to detect root causes quickly and remotely. In our scenario, the supplier knows of a bug in the oven control unit firmware that can cause temperature patterns to fluctuate. The oven OEM rolls out an update over the air to address the issue. To reflect that, let's modify our simulator. To see if quality improved, Fatima filters for the last 10 minutes and refreshes the data, and the quality improvement is clearly visible. This will also drive up OEE and achieve Carlos's objectives. Well, that's it for today's demo. I hope it gave you a good overview of the virtually limitless possibilities that we can help unlock for our customers.